This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Carville for another 2v2v2. I've been sent so many 2v2v2s and I'm trying to go through some of them because I do appreciate when people send me replays to my email. But uh, there's also no quality control, so it could be anything. In the top right hand corner, making up our first part of team number one, this is Blind Honor, the Yellow Soviets. Their ally is the Blue Empire. This is Geeds. G I E D S? I don't know. As the purple allies in the middle, this is Squee84. As their ally, the Orange Empire, this is, with double barracks, ma'am, is Audi RS5, which I guess is a car, so he'll be going very fast. Ooh, lots of allied action in the middle. Some potential uh, for some. Real tough battles here as uh, a refinery gets blocked. But in the north of the island, as the Cyan allies, this is Mandy, 69-69. Their teammate in the south as the green allies, this is Justin, 59-59. So the 69-59 team, which I don't know what that means. Anyways, their allies, everyone else's allies and empire. So a little bit of a mix-up here with the teams, a little bit of a split of the factions, and uh, that four barracks will not do anything. These Imperial Warriors are just going to chop each other to bits, and uh, that is, that's how it goes. you gotta, you got to get a lot of Imperial Warriors, and you got to slice the other guy with your not lightsabers, because that's copyright. Oh, MCV cell! Oh, he's out. Squee is just giving up. Okay, so that's... Did Squee not realize he has a power plant down here or something? Um, okay, so Squee sold off the MCV. It was about to get capped, I guess. Justin going for the Engineer cap, and already a player virtually out of the game. He has a handful of Peacekeepers, sure. But okay, now he's literally out of the game. As Audi is going to be inheriting those Peacekeepers, being the only bit of allied technology, and... This prospector, which could be used to create a little expansion here. So it's up to Audi to uh, do something about that. We'll have to see if the RS5 can uh, speed away with the win. This is a crates game. Okay. All right. Guys, and I can say that because my demographics say it's like 99.8% male. So guys, literally... But if you're a lady, then that's fine. You can include yourself when I say guys. I don't mean it literally. Get ready for some crates game action. As always, Red Alert 2 crates, best crates. You can get a Fury MCV or an APOC tank in a crate. It's amazing! Red Alert 3 crates, definitely much weaker. I think you get money, health, and veterancy. I think that's literally it. You can't, like, get another... Faction MCV within like 15 seconds of the start of the game. Sometimes you'd play a game with crates and you get the crate right next to your base. Right when you start, and you get starting units back in those days. Hey, remember starting units? Anyways, you'd get a crate and you'd be like, oh, what's inside of the crate? And then it's just like veterans for a conscript or something. You're like, ah, oh, that's fine. Thousand bucks into the pocket of Audi. That's how you make a comeback in a game. You get a thousand bucks. Bridge collapse has indeed happened. And uh, Blind Honor, five hammer tanks. Is he going to try and just push Audi right out of this game? I mean, this could be a joint push by Blind Honor and Gids. And uh, they could just try and end it as Audi. I mean, they, they have to have realized that one player is out of the game and it's probably someone on the island. So they should know that uh, one player is out and that that means the other player is potentially weaker Especially with no, you know, like, base defenses to pop up or anything like that from, Ma uh, not Mandy, uh, from Squee. So, Hammer Tank's gonna be crushing all of those infantry. Wow, that was, uh, that was more anticlimactic than I intended. Big transform from Audi, gonna be going for a couple of Tangus, a couple of Hammer, ta hammer Tank kills as well. One Tsunami Tank does pop on out for the defense. Audi gonna be doing what he can, but I don't know that it will really be enough. The Hammer Tanks turn their attention to these other forces. They will be able to level the playing field a bit here. Although, if the Hammer, if the Tsunami Tanks get some nice damage out while 
they were not paying attention. It's not going to be enough. The tsunami tanks are all going down. The combined forces are enough. Really should switch a couple more of those guys, the guys with double guns, over to uh, guns if you actually want to kill that war factory quickly. And I mean, other than that, these tsunami tanks will eventually work away at the hammer tanks if the hammer tanks don't turn around and get the kill. More tsunami tanks going down. Just blast it. Uh, yeah, you're not going to really get the win with the leech beam. Obviously, it's nice for the repairs, but you just need to kill it quickly. There's the fire sale as Audi is basically out of this game. He's not technically, now he's technically out. Okay, so now we're into a 2v2 situation where we've got um, middle and bottom left versus the right side of the map. And this is pretty common, although sometimes we do see these middle two guys the one on the island and the one in the south, band together. They fight it out in a scrappy, scrappy match. They hang on until the end, and then they end up killing everyone slowly but surely. But this is the other way that it tends to go, is that the middle of the map gets crushed pretty quickly, and then we get this kind of cross map. We've got tons of expansions, lots of economic possibilities. Big armies can clash. Water is very important because this ring around the whole thing means that dreadnoughts... Aircraft carriers, Shogun battleships can hit virtually everywhere on the map. Maybe not this corner. These are like the, the safe places are in the very, very corners. But you can hit pretty much everywhere else on the map. You can pretty much hit the whole island. It's a good time for artillery out on the water. And that is exactly what we expect to see here eventually. Cryo shot going to be coming in here. I guess for Mandy or Justin, one of them going to be using that cryo shot and I, well actually no I guess it's Gates, not Gates, uh, Blind Honor with the for some reason I thought one of these guys was allies so then that means they just froze their own harvester <laughs> one of those guys just froze his own harvester in my mind one of these guys was allies huh well, now that's weird in my brain, because I think I called one of them allies earlier. Anyways, Tengu going to be going down. Honorable Discharge will get some extra splash against that Harvester, and you always got to get the timing just right on that Honorable Discharge. My gosh, that was an amazing Harvester kill. I can't believe that actually worked out, as that Harvester does finally go down there. And the Multigunner turrets, or the Multigunner IFVs, they're, they're decent, you know. But honorable discharge, that's the real winner there. APOC tanks out on the field and an airfield getting added on for Blind Honor. We'll have to see if it's a big twin blade strategy from Blind Honor. Blind Honor, he's sitting on the four refineries, the one oil derrick that's good. And it looks like Geeds is just going to be going expansion, a crazy. The possibility to take six refineries that are all relatively tightly clustered, maybe even add on a seventh refinery over here or an eighth, and you've got a huge amount of income, just tons of money coming in, and it's relatively easy to defend relatively small area, not the same kind of a footprint that, uh, that Blind Honor has in the north, or even that Justin has on the left side of the map, splitting up north and south. So lots of possibilities for these guys. And then, of course, as we move forward, Mandy and Justin, Chronosphere, Tanya should be in here somewhere. I mean, if that is not the name of the game, then these people have not learned anything from watching 2v2v2s on my channel. And to be fair, they probably haven't seen the 2v2v2s on my channel. And they almost certainly haven't seen them when this game was played because I don't think those 2v2s were on my channel at that point. So... Time travel is really the name of the game. If you can, choose time travel and then win that way. That would be amazing and it would look just like cheating because you would basically just look like you have uh, one of those map hacks that lets you see what your opponent is building. And be like, ah, I know he's going twin blades. So I'm going to build MiGs. I was like, ah, he's Soviets. He was going to build twin blades anyways. All right, here we go. Expansion or refinery, excuse me, number five coming up here for Geeds. Looks like the oil derrick ended up going down there, so no additional income in that place. And is this a sixth refinery? Nope, it's going to be a mainframe core. Going to be going up to that tier three, which again, going big on the artillery is always a good idea. 
pretty much always. And ooh, this APOC tank, it's out in the open. There are no V4s guarding it, which means... Athena cannons could do some big damage to this army before it ever has a chance to move in. And no, it looks like the multi-gunner turret, multi-gunner IFE, excuse me, is going to be the sacrificial lamb sent forward to get the attention of the APOC tank and draw it forward. And it almost gets the kill on the, uh, on the Mirage tank as well. Which, you know, always unfortunate if your Mirage tank goes down without being able to fire its lovely Spectrum laser. Or Spectral cannon. And uh, get some kills that way. Lovely freeze there. That's a big win. Freezing one flak trooper and then losing your Athena cannon for it because you didn't actually have the time to get the kill on the flak trooper. MCV, it looks like, does go down four, no, five uh, sentry bombers. I almost called them cryo bombers, which would be amazing. A sentry bomber that just drops cryo bombs and they just freeze stuff. But they also do the bomb damage, so it freezes and bombs at the same time. That's not OP. That might be more OP than a Giga Fortress, which is saying something. And speaking of Uprising, I love that there are more people asking about why people don't play Uprising online, and it's like, well, have you ever opened Uprising and tried to play it online? And apparently none of these people have ever tried to play Uprising online. They're just trying to ask you about why other people don't do it. And it's like, well, if you own Uprising, just open it up and you'll see why no one plays it online. That was a lot of Sentry Bombers going down. They got the Naval Yard, they got the Refinery, but that was so expensive. That, that might have, if that was five sentry bombers, even if it was four sentry bombers, that's eight grand. That's more than the cost of a refinery and a naval yard. Maybe a couple of tangus went down, but like to the multi-gunner turrets, but yeesh, that was an expensive bombing run. They did already kill an MCV, so they did get some damage done there. They're not a total loss in that sense, but rebuilding this stuff is going to be relatively trivial for... Yeeds. And actually, he could drop one naval yard there and then drop another one over there or something. Couple of Javelin Troopers getting some shots off on Tangus and going to be forcing them away. Natasha. I would have swore that there was a Tanya earlier, but no. Nope. Natasha going to be going for the kill on the barracks. going to have to run out of range of that Cryo Blast and immediately retarget to the barracks. I mean... You could try and bum rush Natasha with a bunch of infantry, but really, what are you gonna do? You gonna try and bum rush Natasha with a bunch of infantry? You can't do it. This is so many sentries once again going down. Oh, what do you do when you have a commando but there are a bunch of walls? Oh, this is a wonderful lineup. Oh, I can't believe she missed that opportunity to snipe all of those infantry with a single shot. Oh, come on. Eh, ah, two guys. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Lining them up, taking them out. Are, are you going to sentry bomb Natasha? I mean, in theory, it could work, but that's why it doesn't normally work very well. And uh, one more shot. Yeah, there we go. Natasha racking up the kills. That is so many infantry going down. How did you see that going? Mandy, what did you think was going to happen? The walls will be broken down. Natasha will be allowed to shoot this refinery with her laser gun. She will be able to point a laser pointer at it. And, oh, the Peacekeeper may actually get the kill. No, she barely gets the snipe on the Peacekeeper and uh, may also get the kill on this Harvester, which is maybe not the most important thing there. And the Riptide gets the kill on Natasha. Well done there for Justin. Shows up about five minutes after Natasha has wasted everything in sight and is like, all right, I killed Natasha. You're safe now. APOC tanks and hammer tanks going to be running into a huge line of Athena cannons, but there is no real defense here for Justin. He spent all of his APM, all of his time and his money on that Riptide to go and kill Natasha. He forgot to build anything back at home. Although walking into a trap of multi-gunner turrets and Athena cannon could slowly work away at some of these forces, but this is so much DPS and the multi-gunner turrets need to be the ones doing the real damage or tanking the shots rather than the Athena cannon tanking the shots. Hammer tanks trying to run away from sentry bombers 
but sentry bombs catch up to them and there's still five hammer tanks on the field and a bunch of flak troopers as well big crow shot on top of this army of precision bomber as well going to be coming in here and the war factory will go down the multi-gunner turrets will be able to clean up everything else and that's the thing is like if these multi-gunner turrets had been more on the front line if the athena cannons had been back a little bit further that attack would have gone very differently and uh that one Mirage tank was just hanging out, watching it all happen. He was like, do I need to participate in this? I don't think I do, do I? I don't need to participate. It's not really for me, it's for them. This is really for them. And a tier three MCV under threat as another multi-gunner turret going to be going down and the Mirage tank finally shows up to do something. You're gonna be able to eliminate these tank busters relatively quickly, getting that Conyard down to about half health going to be a long repair job for that and the the second refinery never did get re-established here or maybe the sentry bombers took it out again but uh those expensive sentry bomber runs they uh they can't last forever natasha pushed this base back and it has yet to be reclaimed as mandy is unable to do anything about uh about their economic situation like rebuilding their refinery up here Shogun Battleship, on the other hand, going to be pushing back these turrets bit by bit. I mean, one Shogun Battleship does not kill turrets very, very quickly, but it does kill turrets, and it will eventually start punching the stuff that's more important, and uh, like these refineries or the MCB. That's a lot of Javelin Troopers going to be coming in for Mandy, potentially to try and shoot down some of those Empire structures and buildings. These MiGs, do they... Okay, I was like, the MiGs not have any ammo? Because they were just sitting there looking at that Apollo not doing anything about it. Yeeds getting bit, getting ready for a big attack. Six refineries, seven refineries powering a wave force artillery fueled assault on Justin's base. Coming up in probably just a couple of minutes. Yeah, here we go. The mass twin blade strategy. I liked doing this 20 years ago when the beta was out and I still like doing it today. People who like building lots of twin blades understand what I'm talking about. It's one unit that kills basically everything. What else do you need? You can just build a lot of them. It's super fun. I get the sentiment. I understand. Sentry Bombers coming out for a huge bombing run. Yes, they will not take out a single Shogun Battleship. Oh my gosh, that was a massacre. Mandy, what are you doing? Mandy, Mandy, what are you doing? As the Sentry Bombers missed the Shogun Battleship. Oh, this is so many tankers. This is a lot of Apollos. I think the Apollos might win in that fight. Maybe the Tangus would with the point defense drone. Like, this is so many Apollos that uh, they can tread superior numbers of Tangus, especially like that when the engagement is pretty botched when you give them a second run, although this is even more Tangus than before. So surely this is enough Tangus to overwhelm these Apollos with the help of the Sea Wing. The answer is yes. The Apollos all do go down. Twin Blade's going to be stepping on forward. This Apollo unmatched. Did Blind Honor learn about bullfrogs in school? Yes, he did. Bam! Apollo does go down. Shogun Battleship. Did he build a, show, a second Shogun Battleship? Why are you building Naganata cruder, cruisers? Build like two more Shogun Battleships. Two more Shogun Battleships would do three times as much damage as one Shogun Battleship. <laughs> Trust me on the map there, I'm very good at math. Uh, this is very close for fragile allied units to be standing to and about to explode. Super Reactor beautifully timed there. Absolutely beautiful timing on that attack. Could not have been better. And uh, that one multi-gunner turret gets all of the credit. He's like, I shot it by myself when it was 99.9% .9 dead. I was the only one attacking. Everyone else was on a coffee break. Blew up. I mean, two seconds before that, everyone was attacking. But I was the only one there, is what that multi-gunner report says. And I mean, you know, it is kind of true. Oh, okay, so it is two Shogun battleships. Remember this guy who didn't die? <laughs> that was funny. 
Ah, this is so many Apollos, but you know what Apollos don't do is shoot down. Their dumb guns can't point at the ground or at the water as the Apollos get wiped out. A group of them does manage to escape. They head on north where Mandy has been able to eliminate this entire base blind honor locked out of the top right corner of this map. The bridge rebuilt, reestablished, and this bridge does not live, lead to... Terabithia? Terabinthia? I don't know. It instead leads to victory for allied forces, and this is going to be a beautiful pincer movement as it's going to be an assault on two fronts. This is not a very impressive army on this side normally, like for this late into this kind of a game, but this is where the real fight is. The hearts and minds will be destroyed by the army on the other side. This is the distraction force as these hammer tanks just get ground up into tiny pieces and crushed. Cryoblast firing off on the left side, and these Twin Blades are here for the defense. I hope you brought a lot of Apollos as they're going to be able to push these Twin Blades back. And for now, this army needs to move in here and go for the kill. Instead, the IFBs are going to be trying to overwhelm the Twin Blades, but this is way too many Twin Blades for that simple solution. Apollos stepping forward, and they're just getting shredded. There is nothing that can be done to stop the Twin Blades except for, I don't know, like anti-air forces in combination with ground forces, which is a wild idea. Imagine if you killed all of the Bullfrogs first. But instead, the Twin Blades will be able to beat back this army, not before a ton of damage is done. And it looks like the War Factory will maybe go down. It gets eliminated at the last second there. The splash damage is insane as the Twin Blades get annihilated. I did not think they were going to stack up like that for the Javelin Troopers to get the kills. That was a slaughter as units are gifted left, right, and center, given away like it's Christmas and your birthday all in one. One conscript is going to try and hold the line. A second conscript joins his dead friend in a six-foot underground grave as these guys get smashed to bits. Cryoblast firing off once again in the south. A big army with Eureka Omega in here as well. Always got to give a shout out to Eureka. Such a great unit to play with. Such an annoying unit to play against. One of those units that's really uh, love-hate kind of a thing. Love-hate is a good way to put it. This is also like the saddest army. Geeds, what are you doing with your cash? I mean, yeah, you have now three Shogun battleships three Shogun battleships, but you could have like 10 or maybe like four King Onis to stand in front of this army and then like three more Wave Force artillery behind it. What are you doing with your money? That's a lot of Tangus. That's what he's doing with his money. A lot of Tangus. Looks like Mandy has set up a little expansion here in the North. Blind Honor runs right past it with their Bullfrogs and they are going to be heading to the south side of the map where they've got an MCV, they've got a war factory, they've got two super reactors, a vacuum imploder. They've got everything that they need to just sit in this corner of the map and do nothing for the next three minutes of the game. They just don't even need to worry about it. They just need to survive, really. I'm genuinely surprised Mandy and Justin have not built any chronospheres. Like, number one, Chronosphere Tanya to the other side of the map, like inside of a Riptide or something, or an IMP out there. And then blow some stuff up. Or Chronosphere Shoguns or Naganata battleships, cruisers onto land. Chronosphere big groups of infantry into nothing because you just need to Chronosphere them anywhere and it'll kill them. Wave Force artillery out onto the water. Like, there are a million options here as to what you could do and, uh,. With the chronosphere. Chronosphere your own dolphins just to kill them, I guess. Kill your own stuff, who cares? Uh, <laughs> chronosphere your own MCV into an enemy building. Do whatever you want. King Oni's now out on the field for Geeds. He is slowly marching his way across the south part of the map, killing civilian structures one by one with his wave force artillery. And I mean, sometimes. That is, that's what you gotta do. You gotta kill the civilian structures one by one with wave force artillery. Dolphin's gonna be stepping on forward, going for the Shogun battleship. A couple of Shoguns are here to try and defend 
the water or something. I don't know what they were actually doing, but they're not doing much of anything. Could transform those sea wings into sky wings and kill these dolphins very, very quickly. Peacekeeper is going to be sending themselves up north. I don't know what they're doing either. Like 12 peacekeepers going across this bridge to join up with an army. I guess this is like the big assault force on the right side of the map. I love that the oil derrick was never recapped or killed or anything. Justin going to be setting up expansion in the north. Four grand left there. Four and point seven five there. So that's a decent amount of money in terms of you'll get your cash back for the refinery. Not a whole lot other than that, but you will get the cash back for the refinery. I don't think you need to kill every wall. You don't, you don't need to kill every wall. The walls are okay to leave. Kill the peacekeeper, sure. Kill the power plant, okay. You don't, you don't need to kill every wall. Command hub, definitely kill. But uh, peacekeepers, no mirage tanks in the north. Going to be dealing with that oil derrick quite nicely. Ten seconds left on that psionic decimator and this would be a beautiful spot for it to fire off on a ton of army units all potentially ready to be wasted and actually as these king onis and these tangus get sight of this army that may be exactly what geeds decides to do firing off right in the middle of this army Huge chunk of the allied forces get annihilated. Tank busters in the building doing some extra damage, and that is a lot of dead bodies. Mirage tanks going to be stepping backwards. They are on full retreat mode. And, well, Geeds and Blind Honor, they don't have a whole lot left. Geeds has a ton left. Blind Honor, a little bit less so. But, uh, you know, he's got that vacuum imploder power. And actually... Big transform of those Tangu is going to be surrounding that MCV. There's the fire off of Cryo Geddon directly on top of your own MCV, but uh, that's not always the best move, if you know what I mean. Blind Honor is going to be setting up expansion in the south side of the map. And uh, I'm just waiting for this vacuum imploder to go off. I don't know where it's going to fire. Maybe on a building, maybe somewhere else. There isn't, like, a big army left to kill with a vacuum imploder, but you can kill a bunch of infantry with a vacuum imploder. It would definitely do it. Tangus would also do it. You could kill the, the infantry with the Tangus. MCB goes down, and these Tangus can now turn their attention on the allied army forces, which show up, or they could just transform and run away and then vacuum implode. I don't know. What is the plan here? Like, just finish the game. Don't you have enough stuff to just crush everything that your opponents have? Mandy and Justin in the north going to be taking some damage from this vacuum floater. That guy is must be right on the edge of effect. And just like, he's totally fine. And then these buildings right next to him are just ravaged totally in pieces and they've just got literal holes in them busted through these structures. And the guy's just like... What? It's not a big deal. Double War Factory going down there as uh, the writing is all but on the wall. It's maybe in a card being sent to them via snail mail, and it's just going to take a little while to get there. Uh, Justin, he's got infantry. Mandy has buildings. Multi-gunner turret. Got some refineries and uh, the army is going to march on forward and the Mirage tanks are going to mount what they can of a defense a couple of units getting frozen there nothing to worry about considering how many King Onis are on the north side of this attack and this one King Oni going for the crushes flattens so many peacekeepers flattens so many javelin troopers they don't even care about the toxins they don't even care about any of that and Mandy selling off everything in the north going to be pretty much out of this game in terms of production in terms of actual effectiveness and Mandy is out of the game in terms of literacy literally as well uh, in terms of a literal interpretation of out of the game this is a lot of sea wings as Justin decides to leave the game as well
Mandy and Justin have been defeated. A big congratulations to Blind Honor and Geeds for winning this one. Able to take this 2v2v2 with a couple of superpowers as well. And by that, I mean uh, super weapons. Able to get the kills there. Let's take a quick meander through our resources tab. Geeds with 221,000. Not that far ahead of some of the other big players. Just in 160,000, Mandy 150,000. So together, a pretty even 2v2 in terms of income. And then Blind Honor, a little bit lacking there as well, but still pretty strong. And then a very cool 1,515,000 ,15 for Squee and Audi. And that will do it for this game. Money is often the name of the game. Or any RTS, but that will do it for this match. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cyber signing out.